Welcome to the Christian Hardscaper. Today's video is going to be how we leveled off our bedding stone to um, get these pavers as flat as you see them in these video clips. Um, it's a certain process we go through and um, I hope you guys stick around and uh, learn a little bit on how we get these patios so flat and smooth. Alright, so uh, what we're doing here is we're just, um, we found our center point and we're uh, marking it evenly around to get our outer radius circle painted so we know where our patio is going to be at. Um, to me, in my opinion, this is a really uh, crucial part of the, the project is um, laying it out with the marking paint so you can just really have a good idea of where you need to be for your um, bedding stone. Alright guys, we got everything painted out and uh, I think it's safe to say, before I show you, I think it's safe to say that we're both very happy with it. What do you see? It? You happy about it, Benny? The only thing that can make it better is if it was my house <laughs> or Benny's house. That would make it then definitely better. That's the only way it would make it better. Would have went with a different fire pit, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe a different fire pit. But... All right. Benny pounded a stake in over here. We got another stake in on the other side. It's gonna be roughly the center point where we have this string and stake set up. I mean, it's it's pretty hard to get a perfect circle, but that's pretty damn close to a perfect <laughs> circle. Let's go look at it from the top of the hill. What do you say? Yeah, that's gonna be a really sweet area. When we look at it, from this way, the way of which you come in through the, the gate here, everything will be level side to side. But it will be an eighth of a pitch from back to front. Also with this walkway, it's gonna pitch this way. Okay, so as I said in that previous clip, the, um, the first two pipes I, I put in are level side to side if you're looking at the patio from the gate. And the second two pipes I set in are an eighth of a pitch lower than the first set of pipes. And that's going to account for our water runoff pitch. So when I um, do the next section of pipes to the left, I'm going to go an eighth of a pitch lower. And when I do the pipes to the right to go another section, it's going to be an eighth of an inch higher, eighth of a pitch higher to account for the water runoff, like I said. And um, it's very crucial to make sure that those pipes, you double check them, triple check them, and uh, make sure that all your grades are right. Um, you know, even if you end up making a uh, section of pipes level, level is enough to really make you um, get pretty much, I wouldn't say dips and dives, but it will hold water sometimes if you have a level area going into a uh, eighth of an inch, eighth of a pitch, I keep saying that, eighth of a pitch higher. It'll um, create puddles in your uh, patio or walkway and that's just something you really don't want to do so this part of the uh, process is the most crucial. Like I said before we have a three quarter inch crushed stone for our base and for the bedding sand the one inch of bedding sand on top is a one quarter inch crushed stone aggregate. Um, it's important because we don't want any pavers sitting in water. Uh, we want a nice well-drained base. Uh, water is the killer of all this kind of work. Some of you guys in the industry know a few years back everyone kind of um, you know stopped using stone dust for that reason. Stone dust holds on to water like a sponge and um, that's really the worst thing for your uh, product for your pavers or your um, natural stone. Once everybody kind of stopped uh, using stone dust, there's a lot more mason sand applications, which is definitely better because the water travels right through the sand. It doesn't hold on to it. But then um, at which point, if you have a uh, dense grade base or a gravel base, it takes a little bit more for the water to drain through than for say the three quarter inch crushed stone. So this, um, Chip stone, quarter inch chip stone is really probably the best thing that we've we've used since we started doing this a long time ago. I'm gonna uh, set this pipe in. That's the other thing I want to talk to you guys about. So this pipe, like I told you before, we want to have this all 
pitched slightly towards the uh, grass so that if any water's on the patio, it'll run off. Um, so that's what I gotta do. I gotta set this pipe from this one to that one. Pretty much exactly what that is right there. An eighth of a pitch um, to the right. I uh, pretty much go off of this, these two pipes that I have laid in over here. That's my benchmark. guys um, I guess the only thing I can say about screeding this way is if you're not doing it this way you got to start um, you'll never be as accurate as this method just by putting papers in by hand and trawling it off by hand uh, it's just a one inch inner diameter gas pipe so it's a little bit more than an inch outer diameter you want that for uh, the fact that they're just a lot stronger the pipes are so they won't bend you don't want to use the thin um, aluminum pipes or like fence pipes but it's really it's thin they bend and then when they're warped they'll really throw off your patio these gas pipes are really really strong the other thing is you know I see some people use like two by fours and and wood to screed I, I don't like that either because it's I mean you know you go to the <laughs> you go to the Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever and you try to find a straight two by four it's pretty impossible so even if you find one that looks really good by eye, most of the time it's a little bit off. So I'd say get yourself a at least a six foot level. That's what I got. I'm trying to save up some money for a big long screed pole. You know they come in like eight, ten foot, twelve foot sections. I'd love to get like a ten footer, be able to uh, screed big sections all at once. But as of right now, that six foot level is screeded a lot of patios and it's very accurate. Very accurate. All right, that's gonna be wrapping up this video. Um, I guess a few key takeaways is if you don't have this particular material or something comparable available to you in your area, I would recommend a small 3 8 crushed pea stone. Um, and if that's not available to you and the only two options you have are mason sand or stone dust, always go with the sand. Uh, stone dust has just been proven and tested that it is not good for your concrete pavers or natural stone. It holds on to water like a sponge and really deteriorates your uh, product. But check out our next video on um, how we laid the pavers and uh, give the channel a subscribe so you can see more like this. Thanks, guys. Stop me from dusting off my shoes. You 
You might think you'll see me falling to the ground 